I always, I always like doing that Hulk Hogan. You know that. Get that Hulk Hogan on. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Hot Facts. I am your host, Robert Reese. This is Hot Facts with Robert Reese live Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. We go one hour, but it could go a little further if it gets a little harder. I want to say big up to everyone out there. Hopefully everyone had a good night's nice sleep. You woke up to feel positive this Friday. The energy out there was energetic. Lots of great stuff going on. Uh, I was out there doing some delivery work. Ran in, ran into my guy Tony out there. Tony Lopez, what's up out there? He had a very huge day yesterday. Uh, one of the rookie drivers who uh, I, have had, uh, I have the ability and the chance to help and guide along this way. So he's doing a great thing. Uh, today is open topic. Um, it's going to be an open topic of free flow Friday is what I would say for all of you that normally get here and watch and, uh, you know, you like to listen. If you ever feel like you want to hop in, it is free flowing Friday, open topic. If you got something to say, something that um, you want to talk about, something to bring out there to a point that everyone should know about, go ahead and uh, hit that link for all to speak. Okay, uh, there it is there. Now, right now, people, this is being streamed here on YouTube. It's being streamed over on Hot Facts with Robert Reese on uh, the actual Hot Facts with Robert Reese uh, Facebook uh, business page. It is being streamed over on Twitch, being streamed over on my other YouTube ch channel um, that I have there, Robert Reese, TTMA TVF. Um, Good evening, Kevin Harkon, all the way from Lakeland, Florida. Okay. We got one right here. New friend from James Guide Guide. Like and share. Getting ready to clock in at work. We'll be at uh we'll be able to watch some um some other time. Thank you for just stopping by. Uh it's that Mike's Mike's finishing. Ooh, okay. All right. So I just had I just had the Sunfish King on, on, on here. Get a chance to talk to you a little bit also. So it's streaming on my other uh, ch channel there. So Hot Facts is going on today. It's streaming on five different platforms today. I'm able to stream on eight platforms, uh, custom RTMP. So I'm going to be setting it up so it's going to be streaming at certain times. Um, I know that there's people that have uh, they have uh, barber shops and all type of other things and. They have their own little things set up. I'm going to be trying to work deals with people so that I can bring them on so I can actually stream it on over on their thing also so everyone can get a little dose of this hot facts. So free flow, I'm going to talk about uh, my day-to-day, -day, how I went, I guess, on a Walmart Spark. Talk about Tony's big day. We have a scumbag alert. Okay, we have a scumbag alert. This, this story... This story makes me so, so mad. It makes me so, and you know what? I got to change, I have to change my shirt. I, I have to change my shirt be, because of this. Let me go change my shirt. I have to change my shirt. 
Okay. I have to change my shirt for this, this, this one, and I put the wrong hat because the green scheme is gonna make it do all that. But I have to change. I have to change my shirt for this one because the scumbag is a scumbag, and I gotta show you know the World Wildlife Fund, Fund here. I raised a lot of money for the World Wildlife Fund. Um, I was one of the people in charge of helping uh, with the wildlife out there as far as raising money so that uh, people in other countries who are out there as a uh, park ranger and wildlife, uh, uh, wildlife, everything from the biologists to the, uh, to, you know, they have their camps out there. They have everything that's protected. They, 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 they have endangered species that we're taking care, care of tigers, elephants, uh, a lot, a lot of those, a lot of those things, people. There's, there's more tigers held in captivity than we have tigers in the wild. Okay, it's, it's crazy when if you want to go see a tiger, you have to go to a zoo rather than seeing it out there in the wild. And there's ton, tons of more animals that I raise money for while being with the World Wildlife Fund. I personally, personally, myself, people, two million dollars I raised for the World Wildlife Fund. Uh, I was the head of my own team. Uh, we were the bell ringers. We go out there and get bells, and everybody on my team, you better get at least two people to sign up and donate for the whole year on a monthly basis. We go ahead and do that. This helps with um, catching the poachers. It helps with giving them equipment. It helps with keeping everything. We have, um, you know, it was good to have the Sunfish King on here because he does that stuff here. A lot of the money, you know, from the World Wildlife Fund is worldwide. So it helps out even with work that he may be doing and other things like, like, like that. It all it all trickles down. So when I saw the scumbag on this video that we're going to see, uh, it's ridiculous. And because of this scumbag that we are going to see, it's going to open up uh, what I'm going to talk about, um, what, what he has a serious problem with. OK, and anyone that's going to be able to chime in, you can chime in on that. The link is there. And also, OK, I got a huge message. I was on the live last night. I want to give a big shout out to Sherry Caldwell. I want to give a big shout out to the Nitro Freak. I want to give a big shout out to Police Officer Keith. And I want to give a shout out to Kelly Caldwell because I was able to have, you know, part of the dialogue with Kelly Caldwell. There were some things that I heard and some things that I need to address for everyone out there. It doesn't matter what part of the what part of community you are in on YouTube. I think the message that I got to go out, go out there and I'll put out here is going to be worth listening to. Um, I think people who are starting off a channel brand new will need to go ahead and listen to. This is not information that well, it's information that everyone kind of sees. But when you see. When you see what it does to an actual human being and you witness it um, and you witness that, you know, we got to talk about, about, about that. So we got that. That'll be open up for open topic and anything else outside of that we'll go ahead and bring on up. But I want to get in uh, to this right here. First of all, I want to get into um, but I want to get I want to get into the the uh, the scumbag. I want to get into the scumbag alert. I want to get into the scumbag alert because this bothers me so much that I have to change my shirt. Okay, scumbag. Okay, go to jail. Go directly to jail. That is what is going to happen because I am, you know what? Let me, uh, I got my charger plugged in the wrong one. Let me plug it to my computer right here so I can bring it up. So I can bring this up. All right, let me plug this in here. Oh, don't do that. Oh, it's gonna do that. Okay, so I'll just share it like this. That's that's no biggie. I'll just share it like this from the actual file. We're gonna we're we're gonna we're gonna get into a a a a, a scumbag, a real scumbag, people. Let me go ahead and pull this up. And we're gonna get get into why this is this is crazy, and what he did it for is just ridiculous. Okay. Okay, let me get my second file. Okay, let me get this. Let me share the screen. Bam! Start that over. Okay. 
No, I said freeze, punk. All right, now let me share the screen of this scumbag. Let me hit me. Windows up. You realize how hot it is outside? You have the vehicle off. Windows up. You have tape around your dog's mouth. Shocking video shows the disturbing aftermath of a three-month-old puppy locked inside a hot vehicle. He was all uh, with a lot of saliva. Yeah. And yeah. he was like, like, like he wasn't able to breathe. The Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department released body camera footage of the July 20th incident when they say 50-year-old Rahul Cabo Hall left his puppy inside the vehicle for nearly two hours as he went inside to gamble. You have a husky inside the vehicle? It happened on the top floor of the Bellagio parking garage. Employees there rescued the dog through the vehicle's sunroof. Where's the dog at? Okay. Yeah. All right. When recovering the animal, workers found tape covering its mouth. Are you the owner of this vehicle? The Mercedes? All right, turn around, turn around. Put your hands behind your back. Palms together, palms together. Las Vegas officials say the high temperatures that day reached 113 degrees. I'm going to jail on a felony, willful endangerment of an animal. Carbajal was arrested for willful, malicious torture of an animal. For the latest developments... In All right. So that's extremely scumbag to me right there. First of all, Las Vegas, 113 degrees, right? One, the link is up there, people, if you guys want to talk about this, because it's about to go. I'm about to talk about this dude. I'm about to talk about this dude. 113 degrees, okay? Come, come, princess, come, come, mamas, come. They said we're not in a move. We're not falling for that. Let me see if I can trick them or something. Start laying down. You want to come? You want to come? No, they, they, they don't want to come. But my pugs, I'm not going to leave my pugs no car. First of all, that's a three-month-old husky. Um, that's fur, hot temperature, windows rolled up. First of all, you're in the desert. You're in Las Vegas. First of all, it's a whole lot of first of alls. 113 degrees. Everyone knows that that's not what you should be doing. But here's the kicker. He put tape around the dog's mouth so the dog could not make a sound to alert anyone. What would make someone do that? To tape your own puppy's mouth shut. You know why? Because a puppy is going to cry. He's going to go, he's going to do all that. He's going to do all that. People are going to start trying to figure out what's going on. He takes the puppy, 12 weeks, people, 12 weeks. Tapes the puppy's mouth shut. And why would he do that for? He went to gamble. Two hours in the car, super heat, no water, no AC, mouth shut so it cannot drink water. He goes in to gamble. Here is the issue here, people. Gambling is real. Some people have a serious gambling addiction. Gambling is real. I see people, there's the same guy, and he's uh, he's buying the scratchers. He buys the $20 scratchers. He buys stacks of them, and he just sits there for like an hour to scratch them off. If he wins, he goes back, and he just scratches the whole time. Every single day. And he has two buddies that he does it with. They spend all their money on scratchers. They are addicted to that. And they go multiple times throughout the day. Addicted. Now, I don't know what craziness as far as animals or child endangerment that these guys do. But I'm pretty sure when guys have a serious gambling problem, they block everything out. He, he risks, you know, that felony. That's a super felony right there. 
he was like, okay, I, I got to gamble so bad. I got this money in my pocket so bad. I just got this money. I just got this money so bad. I got to gamble so bad I, that I'm going to, that I'm going to, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? That I'm going to tape this dog's mouth shut to go inside to gamble 113 degrees. Look, not even parked in the under garage, parked on the outside. Gambling will do that. He was like, I don't care. The urge to go up there and just do that was just so much. People, there are people out there that will gamble and lose their house. They'll lose their car. They'll gamble other people's things. He damn near killed a dog. Now, just imagine if he had that same money burning in his pocket and he had two kids in the car. Now, he's probably not going to take the kid's mouth shut, but he's going to leave those kids in the car because he left the animal that's three months old. He's going to leave. He's going to leave those kids in the car. Lexus, Lexus Robocop dude, what's up? Hello there at Hot Facts. Hope all is well. All is well. Thank you for stopping by. This gambling thing, people, this gambling thing is serious. He wouldn't take the kid's mouth shut, but he would leave him there for two hours, hot in that car, to go and gamble to lose. He didn't walk back like he won anything. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, by the way, this link is up here. Here, let me, uh, let me paste this link. Hop on in here. T today is today is Free Flow Friday. It's an open link, and I'm speaking about this. Hop on in the link. Yes, yes, sir. Hop on in that link if you have a chance. Now, uh, people, the kids would have been in there hot. If whoever noticed the dog would have noticed the kids. CPS would have took the kids. Everything over gambling and he you can tell he walked back and didn't win and then did you see how he saw all the policemen there he was just gonna try to walk right past them like he said so you, you the owner of this car mercedes yes you are going to jail but he came back so gingerly like trying to come back like no one would notice that you know what he did gambling is serious people People will lose their marriage, their families. People will do anything when it comes to gambling. Now, I'm going to date myself, okay? I'm going to date myself. And I'm not talking about age-wise date. I'm going to date myself right here. There is an episode of Good Times. For those of you who want to understand about, you know, these issues that are going on right now, just go watch. Just go rewatch Good Times. Just go rewatch it. OK, there's an episode of Good Times. Thank you so much, Lexus. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much. Now, there is an episode on Good Times when one of James Evans, James is the father on, on, on Good Times. One of his buddy comes into town. And he and he 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 rarely pops up. So he pops up, and he says, you know, he 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 says he travels. So he was traveling because some guys were looking for him because he skipped out on the debt out of a gambling debt. So he gets there to the house. James in Florida, Evans invite him in. You know, they have a good dinner and all that stuff. And then he goes and tells his uh. He goes and tells his uh, people that um, he's going to go, go out. He goes out gambling all night, comes back and says he has to leave instantly. He went and lost another bet. Some more guys are looking for him. Some guys came to the house with a gun to somebody else's house. Somebody came, to, somebody came looking for somebody at someone else's house with guns because of gambling. So then when he said he had to leave real fast, he was leaving with a suitcase and stuff. And James said, before you go, let me see your suitcase, man. Because Florida Evans was missing her uh, her, her pure silver. They were uh, salt shakers or something like that. And Wynonna said, uh, 
she said that uh, she went ahead and gave him back. So James said, let me see that bag. He looked in them, and he tried to steal their family heirlooms to go use that to gamble to try to win a bet, to cover one bet, then cover another bet. The gambling had him go in to steal from his own friends, his own personal friend who took him in to steal, to go lose again and have guys come after you with guns. That's what gambling does. T says, man, I was driving yesterday when I felt a weird vibe and I stopped, went into a restaurant and damn, I was fading out. Thought that was it for me. It's the next day. I'm still a little woozy. Crazy, huh? How hot was it? Um, normally, all right, people. So when someone says something like that, I told you guys about my background with the other stuff. So how hot was it? First of all, what I, I, I got to get to know your activities, what you were doing. Um, so you felt weird to stop. You went into a restaurant. Damn, uh, you almost, and you know, almost fall, falling out. It was 100 plus degrees. Okay, heat. So now we have heat. We know heat is an element. Um, do you have, were you hydrated? Were you hydrated that day? Or were you drinking water to get hydrated? What did you do the previous day? Are you staying hydrated? That's a question there. Hydration. This heat will get you. Yeah. Hydration, people. What to say? I just got out of bed. Not that not that long ago, uh, but before that. Yeah, look, heat exhaustion, people, it can it can wear on you. Also, you have to understand this. Um, whatever, do you have any medical, do you have any medical conditions? Uh, do you have any medical con conditions that when the heat is out there, it will activate it? Uh, you do know that MS, if you have MS, uh, you, you typically you typically want to be in between uh, 70 and 76 degrees. I've had to train people where I've had to actually have a cooling vest attached to their body so that they can actually uh, train. Um, fibromyalgia, uh, fibromyalgia is another one. Uh, if you if you've had any if you have any uh, skin diseases, things like that, if uh, said haven't drank water in days. Yeah. Don't, don't got to go over anything, anything else there. You haven't drank water in days. Look, you got to drink water every day. I typically I typically drink, uh, if it's not a gallon a day, I typically drink almost a gallon of water a day. People, you want to have the water in you, not, not only to hydrate you, but to get the toxins out of your body. The more water you have, the more it flushes the things out. Uh, you have to use that as a filtration system for your body. And once your system is... Uh, is, is properly filtrated, you know, the water goes in there, the, all the hydration is going to go in there the right way. Do not try to neglect yourself on water and say, well, you know, I'm drinking monsters and I'm drinking, or I'm drinking energy drinks. And no, you need to have, you need to have water. There is no substitute for water. That's why God made it. It is the greatest thing on earth. There's nothing greater than a nice fresh cup of ice cold water when it is hot. There is nothing wrong with that. People, you got to start drinking more water. You drink a lot of soda, monsters, rock stars, all those energy drinks, sodas. If you're putting yourself in all of that, all of that sugar, every everything that goes into that gets inside of you and it clogs you up. It blocks your pores. It makes it so that nothing can happen. When you're not drinking the water to clear that stuff out, your body goes into a it goes into a defense mode. Um, and when you pass out, your body your body is pretty much trying to protect you. It's, it's trying to protect you because it's at risk. Um, that's the only thing your body knows how to do. Your body goes to the extreme whenever it's at risk. And I'll give you an example. Um, there there's a there's a term called hyperplasia, right? And hyperplasia is they found this study in cats, okay? Cats have the ability to add more cells and do things when it comes in time for fat and other you know, other things. If the sunfish king is there, he'll be able to bounce about, about this. Now, the human body, people, when you go into shock, when you go in, when you go into a self state, uh, a starvation or anything else like that, your body adds more cells to store fat. So that's why you'll see people, they'll, you know, they'll seem, well, not seem, you'll see that they are overweight and they say, I don't eat that much. And, and people say, well, how are they overweight and they don't eat that much? Well, their body thinks that, their brain and their body thinks that they're starving themselves. 
So your body has the ability to add more cells, to store fat, to try to protect you. And then, you know, that's what it is. And then the more the more cells it adds for fat and you're really not doing is just is just loading it all up. And that's why you'll it's loaded up. And then you'll be like, wow, someone will say, I only eat once a day. That's not good to eat once a day, people. You gotta have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and you gotta have a you gotta have a snack in between the breakfast and the lunch, and you gotta have a snack in between the lunch and the dinner. You gotta be able to spike your metabolism all day so it's running. When it goes up like this, once your body has broken down everything that it needs, uh, nutritionally wise and everything else like that. It's going to go down like this. And while it's going down like this, you got to keep that fuel burning so you spike it. Now, a snack, someone will say, well, what type of snack uh, would you eat? Okay, there's almonds, pistachios, there's different types of fruits. Um, in my comprehensive uh, food plan that I have, it's broken down step by step. I have those available. The food plan has every single protein, every single fat. Uh, every single good, every 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 single protein, every single good fat. It has it has every single good carbs you can have. It has all your fruits. It's broken down to whatever size or person you are. I broke it down to where it, if if you're an ectomorph, a mesomorph, or an endomorph, those are the three type of body types that we have. So my food plan is broken down into them, and the portion size is there. My food plan, you have the ability to pick whatever you have on that list, and then do it like you know, and put it there. There's even examples on how to cook certain foods that are on there. People, I told you that I also cook too. Um, so you know, you got all that good stuff there. If you are interested in it. I have a I have a 10 day cleanse with, with it. There's a 24 day phase where you go through a cleanse in 14 days of of um, getting your uh, uh, getting yourself right. Then I have a full out. There's there's a, there's a there's a 72 version form of that also. The 72 version form will pretty much get you there and keep your mindset so that you can keep it up. It's not a diet. People fade and they don't diet. There's no such thing as a diet. It's a lifestyle. This teaches you how to actually eat. So even if you are going out to fast food places and other things like that, uh, you'll be able to know exactly what to order. You'll be able to know all of that other stuff is broken down just like that. If anyone will want information on that. And this is for uh, Kelly Codwell. All the excuses that you were given yesterday, I'm going to give this to you for free. Now, there's a person in the gig economy that I have offered to give it to. Now, he writes books. And he has a book. I offer to trade my my uh, my plan for his book. He says he wants to lose 135 pounds. I got to bring this up because it's kind of the same way on how you are acting yesterday. Um, so I have a fail proof plan that he can use. And if he's trying to lose a whole person, he'll drop at least 65 pounds. And 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 if he has to lose 100 something pounds, that means you're over overweight. He'll drop at least 65 pounds in those first 72 days, maybe even more, uh, depending on what you are doing. He turned down the offer because of the fact that, you know, we have people in the economy who don't like how I speak and I keep it real. So he turned it down. So, Kelly, um, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the same the same deal. This is going to this is going to help you here. I'm going to give it to you for free. All you have to do, all you have to do is email me or just send me a thumbs up or something and i will send that to you for free people buy it for 250 dollars. people i'm giving it away for free because of some uh stuff right there um yeah yeah roy roy, roy said the price of medication the price of medication is going up it's going way up now, Lexus says, I do intermediate fasting. There's nothing wrong with doing it fast. There's nothing wrong with doing intermediate fa fasting at all. Now, if you are fasting also, that could also play in. Now, now, you see how, you know, the more information you bring out, go ahead and tie some of that stuff in now. Are you fasting right now? Because you said you went, you know, so are you fasting right now? And if you are fasting right now, um, that, 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 that would, that would do it. Now, if you know that you are going to fast and you know that you, and you know that you put yourself, you know, through these things religiously, you know, whatever, whatever it is before that fast comes. Okay. Before that fast comes, you, your body should be able to take the fast. 
You know what I mean? And that comes through the proper nutrition, you know, your vitamins. And I'm going to bring out my vitamins and stuff that I take so I can show you guys and I'll, and I'll, and I'll break them down for you. Let me show you, let me show you, let me show you our tape. There's one missing. Uh, Gene Koba is not here. I take that also, but I'll start with this. People, um, I have an enlarged heart. I was born with an enlarged heart, uh, mitral valve prolapse, but outside of that, you know, the low dose 81 uh, aspirin. It's good for your heart. It's good. It's good for uh, this. Will, this will help you out with uh, clogging and all type of other stuff. This 81. This is good for, for your heart. Low dose aspirin. Take this uh, whenever you need to. This is very, very important here. Low dose 81 aspirin. You can go take. You can go. Don't get the baby. Go get the, the regular low dose aspirin. Go ahead uh, to your local pharmacy. They have it in multiple different brands. Pick, pick whatever one you got the best discount uh, for. Now, when it comes to my uh, clients, I don't I don't let them know about, you know, stuff like this because this is actual medication. I know that my nutritional side, I don't cross that line there. So I don't I don't I don't uh, I don't let, tell them to go take medicine. I tell them why I take take it. So that's that there. I take the ginger root. OK, I take ginger root daily. OK, ginger root is super good. It's uh, it helps with the digestive system and. All of that other stuff, it pures you. Um, ginger, it, it just tastes good too. So when you sometimes I just take it out the capsule and pour it inside here, and then I'll just and I'll just drink it like that. But uh, ginger root, people, is also good in bed. Um, ginger root is also good in bed. If you actually read the back of those uh, packs that some of the people buy inside those places, the rhinos and all those things. If you read the back of those, you'll see that they have it's ginger root and all that other stuff. And all they do is just add some all they do is uh, add some uh, high some high blood, some high blood opener, some uh, NO2 or something else in there like that to pump your blood. But you don't need to go buy any of that. They overcharge you for something that's going to make you go crazy. Go ahead. Just get your ginger root, uh, your uh, gene copoba, uh, get some of that. Now, fish oil, make sure you have your fish oil, uh, your arteries, your heart. You got to make sure you are well maintained. People, you got to think of this stuff like if you have a vehicle, transmission fluid, you got your brake fluid, you got to have all these things going for you because you only have one of these bodies. Okay. Now, magnesium, calcium, and zinc. Okay. I take my magnesium, my calcium, and my zinc. Okay. You need people. Magnesium, okay. Now, magnesium will help you with your bones, your bone density, and everything else like that. See, this comes on working probably. It's been 100 degrees in North Florida, too hot to be to be on that road. I am looking for a full time W two job. I hear that. When it gets too hot, people, you gotta you gotta adjust. You gotta adjust. It'll get you mentally. So you got magnesium, calcium, zinc, okay. You got all that stuff there. Your bones and your teeth and um, if you're working out, you want to make sure you are taking your magnesium because if you are doing a closed chain exercise, not an open chain exercise, an open chain exercise would be, would be like a seated leg extension or something else like that. A closed chain exercise would be something where your feet is, you know, flat to the floor, kind of like a squat. You know, you're doing uh, you're doing a full compound lift. Uh, broken down and you're doing a squat and your feet are connected flat to the floor that's a closed chain exercise there so whenever you're dealing with something like that there is pounding on your bones and you want to keep your bones strong especially if you may have some type of disorder that has something with osteo in it osteo means brittle people that means brittle bones and your bones have little holes in them and that and they can break so that's why you want to take this magnesium the calcium and the zinc Okay, now the super beat complex actually super beat complex. This has every single thing in it that I need. 
Now, it doesn't have the full doses of, of everything, so I supplement and add a, and I add one of these so I can get 100% of this. Um, this is by itself, this is by itself, but this is a full um, Super B Complex. will give you everything, energy, it helps your brain, it's stimulation, it, help, it, um, it help, helps in uh, food consumption, everything else there, so that's mentally there. You need your B Complex, you need it when you're doing your thing. And last but not least, if I'm not taking my full pack of my BCAAs, which are your branch chain amino acids, um, and uh, Roy, what's that? Um, what's that? What's that dude name that was uh, Will? Not Will. No, what's the dude? Was it Andrew? Uh, what's the dude? The, the the drunk dude always on Saturdays with you. What's the drunk dude's name again? Um, him right there. So he wanted to know about my food plan and all this stuff. Tell him to come and watch this, and then he'll see something. Now. Um, this, if I'm not taking my full BCAA, people, I take L-arginine, people. Now, L-arginine is one of the building blocks of protein. I take this to assist me in doing my thing because I'm getting in and out of cars. Uh, I'm going, I'm picking up groceries. I'm doing all that stuff. So that's still manual labor going up, doing some things. When I also take groceries to the people's homes, I put the bags in my hands. I do arm curls when I go up. When I get, um, get the big things of water, if I have two, I purposely one hand, one up here, then get the other one, one hand, one, one up here, and I walk to the door. I walk to the door with those stairs. I do firemen carry all that stuff, so I'm still getting the workout when I'm going up three story of, of, of floors of stairs. I'm making sure I'm walking right and keeping everything tight, so I'm making sure I'm doing this stuff. So I'm exerting a lot of energy. Anytime I just do this, people, your body is, is using energy, and anything that I put in my body as far as this starts to deplete. OK, so that's another reason why through your food, you have to do the three meals and two snacks in the middle of the day to keep that thing spiked, to keep your metabolism burning. Now, um, Kelly, I, I, I did that for you also. So so that you don't have to say, well, how do you know this and that? I did that for you so I can uh, do that there. All right. But that. That gambling thing is a serious problem, people. Don't gamble. Now I'm going to get into this right here. So now I am A-OK -okay to discuss this. Uh, it was clear yesterday while, while I was on the panel uh, for a couple hours, I was able to discuss this. And I'm, I'm, I, have to, I have to bring this thing out because there's a lot of people who are trying to grow a YouTube channel, OK? There are people that are trying to uh good good looking man good looking. There are people that are trying to start a um YouTube channel and they want to go ahead and do it the wrong ways. This is what I mean. I gotta bring up James Guy Guy in this because people try to mimic what he has done and created for himself as a YouTube content creator and someone who has figured out his business on YouTube. He's like an agency, okay? He can network you. He's an agency. He can network you. He's a business with his networking because he can reach so many people. So he's a business. Some people see his business when someone comes in like, oh, I want to do a channel. This is all what this guy does. Let me go ahead and copy what he does. Then you make a channel. And when you make this channel, all you're doing is sitting on a live like, where my phone? My phone over there. You're sitting on a live like this on your phone and just telling people, hey, can you post that link? Post that link. Post that link. Post that link. I'm going to be the richest on YouTube ever. Post that link, post that link, post that link. Every single day. That's not what James has done. That's not what he has done. James goes live. Okay, he goes live. When he goes live, he talks about his day, the weather is like, he does a food review. He likes to then promote people verbally. He likes to debate people that uh, that that trash his name. So so you'll so you'll get some debate in there. All these things are going on with his ch channel, right? While he's online, 
also while he is live, he has figured out that he has a very a, a very good base to where his networking is good. There's a guy that is from my community, uh, driving. Uh, Dustin is driving. Dustin is driving has like three hundred thousand subscribers or something like that. Dustin is driving goes over there, you know, and he's done his James Guy Black thing. But look. Dustin is driving is using that as like me. I use the James Guy Guy platform because I know what it is. It's not you're not supposed to copy this to have a channel and this is how you're supposed to do a cha channel. Now some people socially were outcasts. Everyone's heard everyone's heard the term table nine. Everyone's heard that term. Some people are outcasts or they have felt like outcasts. They were treated like outcasts or they were introvert to where they kept themselves as an outcast. OK. And some of these people have always wanted to try to fit in. OK. We know what people will do for attention. Some will kill for attention. Literally, some will kill for attention. Some people will try to mimic anything out there because they're trying to fit in. The idea is not yours. It's not even the idea. When I asked them the question, I said, so what's your channel about? Could not answer me on what, if you cannot answer what your own channel is about, then your identity has been, you don't have an identity. And then when you try to mimic someone else and do it completely wrong, there's a problem. Here's the problem, people. Doing the subscribe for subscribe is not a good thing that YouTube wants to see. They do not want to see you subscribe for subscribe. That's not what they want to see at all. So if you are going into one of these growth channels to literally subscribe for subscribe, none of those subscribers are watching your channel if all you do is go on there and just say, hey, drop that link. Someone subscribe. Drop that link for that person. There's no substance to your channel at all. No one's watching your channel for, for anything. And then more importantly, like, YouTube sees you as not a very profitable channel. No one's watching your channel at all. And we broke this down and I broke this down. Some people will see like now, man, you got like almost 3,000 subs, but we watch your actual videos. Yeah, you have some videos, actual videos out of 1,000. Some have like 600 and things like that. You have a lot of these other ones. People, I'm on rapid mode. I overflow, I overload the conveyor belt. I don't care to try to see how many people are going to watch a video. I just upload them. And a lot of my videos that have the low views, they have a lot of subscribers on those videos too. So I don't care. Okay. I throw them out there. I use James Guy Guy for this. I'll go on there and I'll participate. When I go on there and participate, I look at the people's channels that are on there, like how I met J Caddy Beats, Sunfish King, Nitro Freak, Sherry Caldwell, Lexus Rodeo Cop, Lexus Rodeo Cop, a coupe. Sorry. Go away. Sorry. I, I go on there to meet people. Hello, hello, hello. I go on there to meet people because I conduct interviews on my chat channel. I know that there's going to be a um, foul, mass majority of people over there that are trying to grow and get people to go and watch their channel, not to just sub to sub. You don't want to sub to sub. YouTube will start taking your subs away because they know you're subbing to sub. 
So I use James Guy Guy to go and find those channels, ones that interest me, ones that I feel I can do a very good, conduct a very great interview with, so I can go support that channel, share that channel. I want to interview that person, and I want to continue to show support for that per person. Me and that person will share subs, yes. But there's interaction between the both of us continuously. That's what YouTube wants to see. YouTube wants to see that, the collaborations. They want to see you get out there with more than just the same thing also, which is what I am doing, okay? I use it for that. I use it, I use it for interviews now when I do my uh, when I do my two dollar or whatever else it is um, donation or whatever else it is. Some days I won't even go on there because of I share. He watches. I give the good word. I'm collaborating with people, conducting interviews from people over there. That positive energy and everything is there. He'll post my link up there and people will go ahead and click on it. And if they click on it and subscribe and I don't know who that they, they are, I don't know who they are. They are subscribing. I'm not subbing back because I don't know who they are. I only subscribe when I'm in the actual thing there. Anyone that, that says here from James, now I'll go look at a channel and after I get a comment, I'll go look. If it's a channel that I'm like, yeah, there's, there's no there's no reason for me to even subscribe to this channel. I know you want support, but your channel doesn't make any sense. Your channel is not a good channel at all. Um, and what I mean by not a good channel at all, everyone efforts count. But if you put out a channel that is like promoting negative things, I consider that a bad ch channel. So I won't. A lot of these people will subscribe, then unsubscribe so that their channel grows so they don't so it doesn't look like they're doing sub for sub. I don't do that. The people that I sub from are people that are going to be here on my show and I'm building a connection with because I have an actual channel that I'm doing work on. Kelly, on the other hand, has James Guide Guide only one aspect of his channel in sharing and growing. You cannot do that. 16,000 subs. 16,000 subs and no one watches anything. Now, some people, like I was saying, will say, well, hey, you got these videos that have those. Yeah, but you don't understand. Let me break down my niche and how I broke and how I broke down with the overload. I have right now. I have right now. Let me do the check for you guys. I have. Mm -hmm. 927 uploads in six months, which means I have so many videos out there. Everyone's not going to be a chance to watch all the videos. So my accounts are not going to be up like that. But continuously to all of the videos that I have up there equals my numbers. So my videos are being watched. I also have a short section. There's a lot of people who watch my channel specifically for my shorts. I have a short audience. Also, I got over a. Uh, 500,000 views on my shorts se section. Yeah, 500,000 views for my shorts section. So I have people that go and watch my shorts. You have to click on certain sections of mine to see where those views are, but they are absolutely engaging with and watching the channel. Absolutely, they are. The more positive and more powerful engagements of the channel that I want to create, I do an interview with or I'll do a panel with. But you have to have something about your channel. Now, he said he wanted to do the law of attraction. You can do the law of attraction, but he's not doing anything with the law of attraction. So the channel is just dead. Now, check this out. He's not willing to change and do anything for his channel. And it got deep yesterday. It got really deep yesterday. Now, this is why it's so serious when people try to fit in for any of the wrong reasons. He's so obsessed with YouTube and he says he's going to be the richest on YouTube and he's going to do all this other stuff. And all he wants to do is YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. 48 year old man says all he wants to do is YouTube, 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 nothing else. Said, I don't work. I don't want to work. I only want to do YouTube. So while the channel is a copycat channel in the wrong way and, and it, there's, there's no traction there. He has a guy named Keith that goes on there and donates money to him 
because when he's on his live, he somehow slips in to have everyone feel sorry for him about not having a job and people go ahead and send super chats in. So he has figured out a system on how to use his sub to sub because he knows it's not getting money in from sub to sub. He's going to fit in any way he can to get people to sympathize with him. And it's a scam. And they caught it out yesterday. And it's a scam. It's a scam. And people will do anything to fit in that they will scam other people out there to gain a buck at that, to gain a buck and to fit in, to have the people that are sending you money, you interact with them. The other people you don't interact with. So it's so it's a scam. And you'll do anything to get the subs to look right, do a scam, and then tell these same people who are giving you all this money, which is ridiculous, I don't want to work. I don't work. All I want to do is YouTube. Now, people check this out. Now, we all know that over here in the gig world, I help people out. I show you how you can start something up and do something if you want to make a little bit, right? That's what I do. I show you how you can do that, right? Yes, yes, yes. I told him, I said, well, you can do DoorDash or Uber Eats or any other delivery apps. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I said, where do you live? In D.C. I said, oh, there's a guy named Nova Dasher up there. He lives in D.C. Now, people even know Nova Dasher tried to trash me on this thing. I know he's in D.C. I don't have no ill will like that. So I repped out Nova Dasher to him. I said, we have a guy named Nova Dasher up there. He's in D.C. He's making like 300 bucks a day. All he does is pick up things and drop them off. I don't want to do that. I got to do that all day. I don't want to do that. I said, well, I go out like for four hours a day and sometimes five. I said, you can make this much money uh, if you can make, uh, but I would only want to, I would only want to do it for just a little bit of time, just a little bit of time. Nah, nah, you know what? I don't want to work. I don't want to work. I want to do YouTube. Then he was trashing other people's channels. Now people say, well, we hear you trash on people's channels. People, I don't trash. I, I speak hot facts. I do not trash people's channels. I speak the hot facts. There is a big difference in trash and facts. If you're trashing someone's channel, like how I just said, Nova Dash is up there. I'm not trashing him. I'm like, screw that dude. I'm not doing anything. Man. Don't go watch him. No. I said, hey, there's Nova Dash. He makes 300 bucks a day doing his thing. I said, he's right now trying to hit 5,000 for this month or for the week or something, whatever he's trying to do. I said, go watch how he's doing it. He'll break it down and show you. I don't trash channels. What I do is individuals that come in here like disrespecting me on my channel, I will go the full out Tupac on you. Um, Journalist style. That's what I would do. So it's not trash. Completely different thing. But this dude goes on and trashes someone and makes up a story because he knows that the other guy has all the other people that used to watch him that he was in the group with. But that group got tired of him scamming people. So they don't watch. So he will do anything for YouTube right now. And it's a dangerous thing, people, to where you will give up on your ambitions, your, you'll give up on your life. They brought up it's some things about marriage, even that the marriage might even be over because it, it's gotten so crazy on trying to fit in with other people that it can destroy what you already have. It took away, it's damn near taking away a wife. It's taking away like actual friends who are showing support. Um, it's making you become evil because you're trying to do all these other things that has nothing to do with trying to grow anything. And it's all bad, all trying to fit in. And I'm bringing this stuff up because people, this is mental right here. Now I'm going to talk to Sherry on here about mental awareness, but this is a mental thing. Gambling is a mental thing to where you'll, you'll duct tape or whatever tapes. It wasn't Scott's tape. The dog would have opened up. It was some type of, you know, adhesive tape, some type of bonding grip that he taped a three month old Husky's dog mouth shut, kept it in a car with all the windows rolled up with no air for two hours in 113 degree weather because he got some money and he wanted to go ahead and gamble. He was going to do anything to gamble. On the other hand, we have someone that will not do anything just to do YouTube. Now, they brought up the financials about the YouTube. 
It's not doing anything financially on YouTube as far as the channel. It's everyone that's donating money because of, you know, the manipulation there. And, and that's why all the people got mad and had that intervention last night. They had an intervention about that. Because it's a scam. When they know you can get up and go outside and do anything, when I brought up stuff, every idea for a job was thrown out the window. Everything about even changing your channel to adding something into your channel and not just try to do sub to sub. No, sub to sub. I only want to do this. Will not change the mind on anything. And that's a mental thing, people. There is a block there. There is something there that is blocked off. It's 48 years old. No one 48 years old should be trying to fit in for anyone. I'm sorry. No one 48 should be trying to fit in with anyone. And no one 48 should have 14-year-old moder uh, moderators inside your chat checking grown men who are, who are speaking actual factuals. No grown man should have kids running his channel like that. Who? It's ridiculous. And now let me tell you how else far it went to. I checked on the social blade and they were saying the comments that he has on there are bots. People are buying comments and likes also. He's gone so far to where there's bots that write, there's bots that comment, that go in there. We checked out the social blade. Every single day, there's at least 400 people that are subscribing to the channel. And then there's 900s. And then you'll see lose 100, but then you'll see like 700 gain. And there's no interaction with those people to a video. So that's so that's how you know those things are bots. They are bots. So he's buying. He wants to fit in so bad that he's buying bots. He's buying bot likes. He's buying bot comments to try to fit into a community so that he looks up, so that he looks a certain way. What's up, cornbread? What's up, my man, cornbread? so that he looks a certain way, okay? That's not cool, people. You should not be trying to fit in like that. If you were trying to get in here to grow a channel and build something from the ground up, you have to do it real organically. We talked about this yesterday. I go out like, in my video, I did an Uber Eats yesterday. Three drivers subscribed to my chat channel um, after I broke, him, um, broke it down, helped the lady find the right door. She was a driver. I dropped mine off, and we were in the same hotel. Helped her walk and try to find what room she was going to. Broke it down. Broke down the uh, broke down the Prop 22 and broke down everything that I go over as far as on my channel for us as gig content creators and everything else like that. They subscribe, and then they go and share and do stuff like that. I have a, a text message from somebody else that is over on another platform. I'm on Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter, YouTube. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on other platforms. Other people watch me on the other platform because I put videos up there. The same way we're watching Hot Facts right now, I'm doing the same thing on the other ones, and they are all growing right now. I grew YouTube first. Uh, Instagram is growing very, very well right now. Um, Facebook is moving very, very well right, right now. TikTok is moving very, very well right, right now. So, you know, for what they are do doing, I have them there. There are people there that are only watching my reels and saying, thanks for the support. I love watching your videos. Now, what I'm doing with them is, okay, now, since you are on that platform where you cannot see my stream, I also stream here. I convert them over to all my platforms in case, in case, in case, Ava, Ava, what are you guys talking about? I watched your videos last night. Oh, okay, okay. My daughter's friend. You watch my videos? Yeah. Thank you, Aria. Thank you, Aria. Okay, my daughter. Okay, I'm not mad at my daughter. She knows not to interrupt me, but she wants to let me know that her, her friend's family is watching me inside their house. I do that too, people. I do that too. I do that too. All the kids around here who my daughters play with, all their parents, they come and check out Hot Facts, okay? I network. I get it out there, and I transition them over to each one that I do so my so my people can be everywhere. That's how you do it right there, Ke Kelly. That's how, you, that's how you do it. He says, currently working, okay, yep. Um, that's how you do it there, Kev Kelly. You got to do it like that organically. Then I go and get five people every day that I per personally pick. If I don't get five, I'll go with whatever I got so I'm not just bringing in random people just like that. 
I want people that's going to, you know, whatever they watch for, that's what they watch for. Some people watch for interviews. Some people watch the ride-alongs. Some people like to get the gig news and the hot facts like this. Some people will watch for a good panel or debate. You get to pick or choose. You may want to watch boxing talk. I got that too. Okay. That's how you do it there, Kip Kelly. You got to do it organically. You got to do it organically. Everybody in this world does not have one personality and everybody on their phone, they have more than a few apps on their phone that they use. You got to get out there. You got to stop thinking that YouTube is everything. It is to you because you put your mind there that it's all YouTube, 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 YouTube. I don't, YouTube has got you not even having a job to where like it's crazy. That's crazy. But people, this is what happens when you try to come into something and you're coming into it for the wrong reasons. It's very, very hard to succeed. It is very, very hard to succeed. Okay? People, don't care who you are. 48 is definitely too old to be trying to fit it in. Don't try to fit in, even though it's going to happen throughout life. You know, different, and it, it happens when you get older in different realms. You may want to be a Mason. You want to be part of the Elks Lodge. You want to do different things like that. You know, some people have to do certain rituals and things to prove them to. To, to fit that in certain things like that are going to happen but you don't have to do those things either uh that's that's why some people don't join fraternities they feel like they don't want to have to fit fit in you know it's things like that you don't have to try to do things like that because when you start it off it's all starting off for the wrong reason and this should be a psa for everyone go back and watch uh go watch sherry um caldwell's go watch sherry caldwell's intervention yesterday because that was something that I was coming in to check out the live. I didn't think that I was going to come in on the live, on a live intervention. I did not think I was going to see a live intervention. But that's what I saw. And it had to make me talk about it. Because people, this is journalism, it's reporting, and this is part of Hot Facts. Anybody in, on YouTube, it's fair game for me. Anybody on YouTube, is fair game for me so I can teach, educate, and help people become more aware. This is like a gambling thing. This is like the kids that, that are addicted to Fortnite who just play Fortnite all day and they don't do anything else. It's another addiction. Okay. It's another addiction. Now I stopped in addiction. Okay. I, you know, now growing up, you know, you, you get to the age where you can drink, you do your thing. And then, you know, you're always going, you know, you go to the bar, you drink, and then you re realize you haven't, you always, you know, you go out, you drink, like you've been, like you've been drinking the whole time. Like, it's like, dang. So, I haven't drank in it's like 10 months. No, actually, when my nephew got shot and killed, I had two shots. So that one thing, but I haven't had any since. So before that happened, it was nine months. And then that happened, those two shots. So I, I'm not starting it over. I'm not starting it over. I'm not starting it over because I haven't done it since. Um, it feels bad and everything, but that was a, a, an addiction that I wanted to go ahead and kick. Like, I don't want to have to always go to eat at Chili's and, oh, let me get a, let me get a beer. Let me get a beer and a shot or something with my drink. How come I just can't have the Sprite or the water um, or the, on, the, the Arnold Palmer, the Arnold Palmer iced tea? You know what I mean? How come I just can't have the Arnold Palmer iced tea? You know what I mean? And it's not like, it's not like you're doing it all the time, but you know, if you think about it, it's like, man, I was I was doing that's doing it uh, that's doing it a, a lot because just think every restaurant you go to people will go in there hey hey man you want a beer that just happens they call that social drinking but social drinking is still um alcoholism you know what I mean it still is because it's not something that stops so once you even stop the social aspect of uh, of it just ask someone that smokes that smokes a six cigarette they say they smoke socially. Well, how many times are they going out socially and, and, and they're bumming a cigarette or something? No, you smoke. And psychologically, you know what I mean? So I went and broke myself from that. And, you know, it's it's cool. You got to understand what addictions are. When I started this Hot Facts channel, I said one, one thing I want to do is the channel. And I said that if I'm going to do the ch channel, what is something that I am doing that I can do without? I really have to think hard about it. I thought hard about it as easy as, 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 as it is to just not do it. It's so hard. 
I was like, man, what can I do? And I never thought about the alcohol. I never thought about it. And I was like, one day I was just watching, um, I was watching TTV. And I was like, man, that dude is hammered right there. I said, you know what? I'm going to see if I can do, do it. I said, I'm going to see if I can just stop. And that was the thing that I felt that I can, if I'm going to do this to put in something that I feel I can take away, that can do damage and it's not really going to help anything, what can I take away? And I took away the alcohol. And I took away that addiction. Um, you know, when you take away some things, it, it tries to open up more things, but that's where your mental has got to be in there. Kelly, your mental was blocked because it had you fighting with everyone and all those people were not even coming at you in the wrong way. You were so defensive. You were so defensive. It was a, it was an intervention. How you see on TV, people, it was an intervention. He was so defensive that he was not taking that. This was like really constructive and helpful criticism with a plan put in place so that you can start. So that's how it was. It was a real intervention. He was fighting everyone. No, 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 no. Blocked off by the whole fact. And then he kept saying, I know the secret. I'm going to be the richest on YouTube of all time. He's 48 years old. Gee, you got to look at it like this. If we're playing sports, you can't be a 48 year old rookie. You should have, you should have, you should have been retired 12 years ago almost. It's ridiculous. But people, that's what people do when they come into a theme. They come in for no reason. Don't just follow. Don't follow and copy and follow and blind. And this is why I tell the content creators out there, this will happen. You will get someone that will try to emulate you and only take the part of what you are, take, take one part of what you are do doing and try to do it all the wrong way. I tell the people in this gig economy that I do content for also that you as a content creator, you should be given the information like me about everything so that so that if someone watches your channel, they're not going to see all these bad mistakes, all these bad flaws, because guess what? Because of your success, they don't understand these bad flaws that you are do do doing. It's not really bad in your realm because you have separated them. They don't see that process. They'll take that and think that that is part of what they have to do, and they are going to run with it all the way. And when they do that, it makes you look bad because then they're going to start shouting you out, and then and you don't really pay attention to their channel, and then you don't even know. That right there will make people stop even subscribing on that person. They're going to be like, he says that person's name. He caught. He, he got that from them. No, he did not get that from them. He got that from whatever is going on in his head. He did not get that from them. He did not get that from them. People, you got to be your own person. Stop following everyone's. Uh, what did uh, what did he say? Stop following future like he got carrots in his ass crack. Yeah, you got to stop doing that. And then you got people that don't understand what James Guy is is doing. I love what he's doing. Because he's not going out there and subscribe for subscribe, people. He is the person dropping the links for people to have people subscribe to subscribe. He is taking in the money as a business because he has a platform and he has figured out the filtration. He takes in the money. He puts it there to have people's names drop. And because he is the host, all those people subscribe to his channel and he is not following those people back. So he is not doing sub to sub. Kelly, you don't understand that point. You can't take certain parts of someone's channel and think that's all they're doing. He has a whole business behind it. He's not even subscribing to those people. He only subscribes to people that he knows that he's going to interact with on the regular all the time. That's it. Outside of that, he is not. So he's getting subscribers while doing a service for people. People are paying for a service and he is providing a service that will get them out there and get more reach. People are subscribing to him. They are buying into him, into his business to have that flow. That's not what his channel is, what you are doing. And there's a lot of channels out there in other countries. So all they do is share and grow. They talked about this last night also. They say, pay this money. They'll get you these subs and they'll do, <clears throat> excuse me, and those subs will disappear. 
and it's all sharing growth check channels. And that's the type of channel he is doing because they scam your money and your subs leave the very next day. He's doing the exact same thing. And people, he's making him, he's putting up a heartfelt story about being down and out on earth. No one is there for him. Pity Patty kicking rocks when he's walking down the street. Pippi Longstocking wouldn't even play with him, is what he's saying. Pippi Longstocking wouldn't even play with him. She wouldn't even let Mr. Nelson sniff at all. That's what he's making it seem like. He's making it seem like he's Charlie Brown and Lucy moves that football every single time. Every single time. He's making it seem like, well, I can't even use Martin and Pam because they got love for each other. They, they, they just threw shots at each other. He's making it seem like the whole world's against him and he can't do anything and he is so depressed. Now, I was on the forum on Chaotic Truth and we talked about people that do these things. They'll go all the way out to try to seem like they're depressed, but, but when it's time to put them in the real situation, like take someone and start giving them medication, let's, let's go put them on a 72-hour psych hold. Then these people start acting normal and want to do the right stuff. We talked about people like this. They're, you know, they, man, man. It's sad that I have to actually witness it, like not watching it on the video, actually watching it actually and participating on the live. That's normally something that you watch a video on to try not to do, you know, but it was like, it was a real intervention right there. I was part of a real intervention and my input was actually, they were looking, it's crazy. They were looking for my input from someone else to come in. And I just happened to be there that day. They spoke about that, that it's coming from someone else, not us. And then take, and then check this. This is how you know when you're all the way locked in whatever zone it is. This is uh, what it is. He kept saying to Nitro. I don't like the way you talk to me. And they just kept, you know, he kept trying, they kept arguing back and forth. Like, I don't like the way you talk to me. So, you know, the same thing that he was saying, I was saying the exact same thing. And he kept saying, I'll listen to you, Hot Facts. I'll listen to you. I said, okay. So you don't listen to him because you don't like how he's coming across. What's up, John Paul? What's up, John Paul? You don't like him because his approach or the way he sounds. But I'm saying the same thing, right? So I said, so what did you take from it? He could not take anything from it because mentally he's not there to listen. He's not focused on anything else like that except this false reality agenda. And I talk in my gig reality on my gig world about the false reality in this false reality that you will do anything to try to achieve this false reality. You will try to do anything anything to try to achieve a false reality. I don't know, man. Content creators, if, if, if you're new trying to start a page, a channel on anywhere, do not try to get in there and do it Do it the cheating way, get in there and start buying all the, do not do it like that, people. It's never, it's never gonna work. It's never gonna work. Never gonna work. You got to go through things and do it the right way. It's like when I would pull up and I would train some of my clients at the park because, you know, training outdoors, fresher air, you get to do different things. I get to do sprints, put parachutes on them, do ladders. I get to do a whole lot of stuff with the average person at the park. You'll get out there and you'll see people out there and they're trainers also um, people. And just to let you know, when you see personal trainers at a park, it could be that they don't have a gym, but also their business they have a business license and they are actually able to contract and do business at the park. So they're able to do that also. It's not just like they're going out there and not paying, making money and not paying taxes on it. Just want to let you guys know about that. Um, so you'll see these guys doing work and you'll see them staring at you the whole time and like looking at your equipment and all this stuff. And then when, you know, if I'll see my client, they'll do a lap around the park and he has one doing something, he'll come and talk. Man, uh, what do you do? You know, um, I've been do doing this. I started off, man, I just work out and then my girlfriend's friends, you know, I just start training them and now I just go and do, do this. Man, uh, what, cert, uh, what cert do you have? Um, 
Would you go to school? What cert do you have? Do you have do you have AFA? Do you have uh, NCCPT? Do you have ACE? Do you have NASA? Um, you know, there's so there's so many different certs that you can have. Uh, did you get a fitness cert at a at, at a college? Did you, what program did you do? Uh, nah, man, like I I don't care about that stuff. Uh, uh, are you licensed? Uh, as as far as uh, do you have uh, do you have insurance? You know, if someone gets hurt twist the ankle or anything you're liable because they're under your care you have insurance for, for this oh nah man like when then when you talk to them about yeah i see you doing doing this are you are you guys working on this for, 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 for on this no knowledge no information about what i'm talking about being out there trying to fit that in and then you see you know you walk back to the deer thing and then you see him always on the phone with his client they're on tinder and stuff people are trying to I'm like, oh man, trainers get girls and stuff. Let me go ahead and be a tra trainer, faking the funk. You can't go into something and, and, and try to just make it look like something to be so, something. You got to put in the hard work. You got to go to that school to be able to break down stuff how I did on, on these pills. You got to be able to break stuff down and know what you're talking about so that you have some substance there. You can't go into things for the wrong reason. It doesn't matter what it is, what it is. Um, if anybody out there has something to say about any of that, or if you have an example of someone being lazy, if you have an example of someone with an addict um, with an addiction that has lost everything, please share the story. Because first of all, that guy is going to jail for the dog. It's a felony. He he he's he's going to jail. Um, we got Kelly right here who is just about to lose his marriage and everything else because he wants to be married to YouTube and all the wrong reason is calling him to cause manipulation on other innocent people and attack people and all of this other stuff because he's addicted to YouTube. It's destruction. I talked about how I have to break away from the alcohol. It was an addiction. It was an addiction. I broke away from it. I have to go out there and break away from that. If there's anyone out there that has a story of someone who was addicted to something or if you were addicted to something and you want to, because this is not just for you guys listening here, people will go back and replay this. And here's another thing for the people that may, may say, man, you know, your live session is just moving along. People, I'm in my sixth month. I am in traction phase still. I'm in a one year of traction phase. My traction phase does not stop until the year is over. I just moved to this phase so fast that I'm still in traction mode. So all that stuff, you know, is going going on. I'm in traction mode. So when they say not everyone is, you know, is do, doing that, people, it's not for just us here. Somebody will watch that and hear that message there and say, you know what? I need to hear that message. I know someone right now that is going through something like this and they're addicted if you got something to say about any type of an addiction you want to go out there and say something the the floor is here open uh that's for anyone that wants to go ahead and do that there the floor is open for that and if you want to just bring up anything to talk about anything if you want to ask me a question and i got to answer a question right here and, and i got to answer this one by way of instagram and by way of facebook People are asking me, where did I get my cool box from? My delivery box, Big Bertha Utilda May, uh, I got that on Postmates about six years ago. They don't make that box anymore. Um, that is a bread winner and a bread maker right there. Because of that box, when I go do drop-offs, customers will tip me extra just because of that box. I've had a guy come, when I went to the door with the, or another door dancer driver, he said, I like your set setup. It's professional. Stay here. The DoorDash driver thought he was talking to her, too. She stayed. He came back and gave me a, a, a $20 cash tip. She stood there. I walked to my car. She was still standing there. He And we both were delivering. She didn't have the equipment. I'm professional. I do my thing. That box is named Big Bertha Utilda May. She is my rock solid. She will never leave me. She puts in the most work and makes me the most money without giving me any lip back. Um she writes shotgun every single time. Uh, so that, that box has eight cup holders in it. It's got everything. Oh, and I got an announcement TFT. Um, and people, my hot facts clothing is about to be right back months back up. I I I had a I had a terrible mistake on and I'm gonna talk about this too. I had a terrible mistake of having one account linked to it, and all my accounts were just pretty much wiped out. 
because of all when I put the money in, it's going back for this and that. So my accounts were wiped out. So when you see me going out there, really taking all these orders and getting this money in so I can get do my thing right, that's what I'm out there doing. And I have to do that. So right now I'm back on track. TFT, I got you coming. So uh, yes, uh, people, I do give away boxes too. I, I've, I've given away boxes and gas cards and stuff like that. So I, I, I will be doing the delivery box giveaway also. Um, and I will try to be in collaboration with people like the Sunfish King and other channels that I get in contact with. Uh, Nitro Freak, I want to conduct the interview with you on the RC level. The Nitro Freak people, go ahead and check this guy out. The guy has uh, has RC cars that are like 7000 bucks. So I really want to get into that because that is something that I really want to get into. Um, go ahead and uh, go ahead and check out uh, the Nitro Freak. Um, really great stuff there. Um, but good, 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 good collab over there. I want to do man that you made me lose track because I was thinking myself, I said, Oh, those RC cars, those RC cars that everybody wants to use RC cars. I don't care who you are, that is cool, that is cool, right? Right there. But my box people, I do give those th things out. They are they are coming. I give out the sturdy boxes. They have cup holders in them. I give those things out so people can actually be more professional when they, especially if you have to go inside of a, a school, a medical office, a law office, because you could be dropping off paper for printers. You could be picking up anything. So I like to have the people actually be more professional when they're doing their thing, because the more professional you are, the more money you are going to make just off of GP, just off of good people, just off of GP. That is what's going to happen. So I'm going to try to do some uh, collabos with other content creators who have things going on so that when I'm doing a giveaway, I can uh, let them know that I'm going to be doing a giveaway. They can come on here and, you know, we can all be on screen at the same time. And, you know, they can say, hey, um, you know, I'm giving away a box and someone will win something there. I want to use that idea that the Sunfish King has and actually incorporate him into mine over here. So it goes a whole lot. You know, so, it, so it goes a whole lot for for. This is how you grow a channel, people. You have to network and have a plan, plan put in action to where it's actually going to work. So all of you guys who are watching, who have come in from all these other channels, you have the, the same opportunity on my giveaways to win these things, too. Now, even if you don't do the things that these giveaways are going to go ahead and be for, you can just use it for yourself. When I go buy our Little Caesars or Domino's from the straight play places, people, I go there, pick them up, and I throw them right inside my own hot box. I can go inside the store, go to Food for Less or Kro Kroger, buy something, come out, and my stuff is hot in my own hot box. You can use it for that. You go into a picnic or something. You got your fat family. You want to be on go to sit down, pick that thing on up, and do your thing. Music City Gig Hustler, what's up? Perk, I remember you. You went to the uh, you went to the WSCS. You went to the WSS in Moreno Valley. Interview people campaigning outside for the shoes. Yes, people. This is what I'm telling you, people. Hot facts. I'm out there on the street, people. I'm out there doing my thing. He is absolutely right, people. I, I went to the WSS, which was right across the street. They moved it to the other one now. They were lined up outside, people, for hours for the new Jordans. So I walked on up with my camera. I interviewed the people then and there. And how I tell you people how I network and I meet five people every day, check this out. This comment says, I remember you. Exclamation, exclamation. You went to the WSS in Moreno Valley, people. Yes. I am all over the place, people doing my thing. This is how you get a following. This is how you grow. Now, I got people in my own gig uh, world who they hate on me so bad. They hate on me so bad. They, they say my grind is they don't like my grind. Um, first, they start off saying they love all my stuff, and then they just started hating. They hate how fast I put up videos. They tell me that or they, they just throw mad hate. And, it, and you know, People, you got to stop do, doing that. Real got to recognize real. I use this term called way real. You just got to be way real. You know, so I, I like to show those people on the gig world of my lives all the positive interactions that go on with everyone in and out of everything. Says uh, Perk says, keep up the hard work. You're such a nice person. You can tell good vibes from you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, people. That's what I want people to know. Genuine things coming from when people have genuine interactions with me. 
That's what Hot Facts is all about. Because people, let me tell you, you'll get on this, uh, you'll get on this camera, okay? And let me try to fix this background. That's bugging me. You'll get on this camera, people, and um, no, whatever. I'll leave it like that. Like that. When you, oh no, I'm not gonna leave it like that. I didn't see that. When you get on this camera, people, people will try to talk about you and say all type of things to you, to you right? And when they and when, and when they do all these things, they have no they have no care in the world. They don't care who's watching. All they want to do is just hate. That's all they want to do. And I'm like, man, this got to be so much more than life for you just hating. You got to start congratulating. You got to start. Con if you congratulate more, you'll grow a little more. And that's word. Now, by the way, people, Music City Gig Hustler is in the building. Don't let the haters get you down. I have haters also who, who uh, come and comment on my content. Yes, they're going to hate whenever something positive is going on. Now, Music City Gig Hustler, I got you right here. You are one of my people. This is one of my. Now, Music City Gig Hustler. Let me do that. Let me put that right there. Music City. This is someone from my gig world, and I've been waiting till you hop back in. You are now a moderator. Um, please keep the peace and help this channel, uh, chat channel be what it is supposed to be. And also, Music City Gig Hustler. We're going to do this for you. Now, people, Kelly, this is how I do the share and grow on my chat channel. I incorporate it also. Um, let me see. This is how I do it right here, Kelly. This is a real person who, who interacts on my channel all the time. Make him a moderator because it's a real person that interacts all the time. And now watch this, Kelly. Watch watch what I do here. Watch what I do here. Watch how I show support for this man and, and his wife who come in here all the time. They watch me when they go to bed. They watch me in the car. They show love and support. And I go over there and show them support. So when that happens, they're trying to grow a channel and reach 1,000 subs. Without further ado, people, here is the link is the link is up here. The link is also pinned this message. That link is pinned. Go ahead and check out Music City Gig Hustler. Great channel. Go ahead, check the channel out. Um, have a lot of great stuff on there. They are doing their thing. It's a husband and a wife, and they have such a great interaction. Now, when, when he's going doing his deliveries, she'll keep the phone and talk to you. I love their accents, people. The accents make me laugh. When I'm just sitting, I'm just sitting watching. I just crackle up over the accents, okay? They are in the gig economy, too. Now, the reason why I like to share people from the gig economy, people, because I'm the California gig economy guy. I not only do California, I break down the gig economy nationwide. I just live in California where it all first started. So Prop 22 is here, but I can also educate people around the U.S. because they also have hourly pay in other states also. But we have different markets out there that people drive in. And if you drive in some of these uh, markets, I know that I have people that give all the way accurate information like Kelly. I tried to give you Nova Dasher. He's in D.C. You can watch him. He's probably been to your house. Like, like I said, you can watch him make the money. You can learn how to do it and go sign on up. But if you are someone that wants to go ahead and uh, do it there, you see Music City Gig Hustler put one and two together. I'm not going to tell you where they are from. You can go click on the channel and figure out Music City Gig Hustler. What's that all about? There's already like three states. You can kind of narrow it down in cities right there. Figure it out. You'll figure out that goes into their flow and how they do their thing, the positive energy and all that. Go ahead and click on that. Very nice channel, and if you are someone who wants to try to do it as a couple, husband or husband and wife together, me and my wife do it separate. She drives when I don't drive. She drives in the middle of the day, and I drive in the morning, and then I drive late night. So I'm here throughout the whole day for the kids and stuff, and she goes and does her thing. Whoop, whoop, whoop. But every now and then, you'll check my videos to where you'll see me run into my wife in some of the same locations, like when I caught her parking in, um, in a red spot. And you'll see sometimes when I'll ride in her passenger seat and she's doing the deliveries and then I'm filming her doing the deliveries. 
But um, yeah, so you can watch them to see how to see how they do do it, and they both have an app. So whoever's app hits, that's the one they're gonna do because the money comes from the same account, so it don't matter. Um, just go watch and have a good time. Also, there was a couple that I wanted to do an interview with. They turned me down, made up an excuse. They're on the side of the people that don't like me, but I'm still going to shout them out because I have no hate and no ill will. Long Island Dashing Experience, go ahead and check them out. It's a husband and a wife. They are a couple. Um, they, they are there in Royal Island. I love their accents, too. I like how when the husband thinks he's got, got it, the wife will like, nope, let's do it like this. They do all that. They have a good dynamic. They have wireless mics that they wear right here. They know how to do the thing. They also let you know about um, the equipment that they're using. They also donate to charities. They have charities. My son, Robert John Reese III, passed away. He had the George uh, Syndrome. He had Trungus Arteriosis. He was a heart patient like me. I donate to, I donate to things like this. And uh, with the George syndrome, it's a form of autism. My son Dylan has a slight form of um, Asperger's in him. I like to donate there. See, they didn't even know all of this stuff. I was going to bring all of this stuff up in our interview, but they used the hate that everybody else has to not even know that I, that I do all this stuff. Um, I raise money for the Ronald McDonald's house. Also, pe people, a uh, charity. We've had to stay there a few times when my son was having his heart sur surgeries. So I like to do all of those things also. I really want to do that interview to like and really like do one of those challenges with them to raise money. Um, but they lost that out of me there. But I wanted to. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Said, thank you so much. How fast? No problem. You guys are my people. Thanks at John Paul. I will check yours out also. Connect, people. Yes, you got to connect. John Paul went up there and did his thing. Good looking on sending that in. But, people, that's another reason why I like to do these interviews. People, the people who don't know me here on YouTube, yeah, you guys don't know me. You guys have no idea about me. So the interviews, it allows you, you guys to actually see, like, dang, this guy actually knows a lot of stuff over here. He knows a lot of stuff that I didn't think he even knew about. Yes, people, I'm intelligent. I'm intelligent. That's why I do the interview so that you can actually see. that. That's why the Sunfish King interview, people thought, oh, he's just going to talk about fishing. No, we talked about fish, people. Yes, but we talked about a whole lot of other things. And he, I let him know what my passion was to go to school first. Then, people, you got a chance to see how smart I am when it comes into that realm. You know, you never turn down an interview. I had somebody else turn down one. Because I have a kidney disease that I was uh, that I was born with is not curable, so I was trying to interview someone when their wife has they go through that dialysis all the time, and he has to work to do the thing. I wanted to do an interview with that and compare how my dad does and to give him good love and talk about my kidney disease, you know. So I was going to be able to to give, you know, I like I like to do those things, but people never judge, never judge, never judge. You got to remember. You got to remember, when someone wants to do something with you, especially an interview, people, that means that they find something interesting in you. And chances are they're going to highlight that. So just remember that when uh, when someone ever asks you if you are interested in, in conducting an interview with them, first go check out their interviews, but then keep that inside your head because if someone wants to do something with you, and it's about you, they are watching something about you that you do not really pay attention to yourself, and they see it, and they feel that, it's, that it is something that is worth people uh, getting some information from. So, so when someone wants to give you an interview with people, just think about it. Be smart. All, all advertisement is good advertisement, but just be smart about it. There's something special about you out there, okay? There's something special about you. Says that how fast Robert Reed. Did you see uh, the Karen video has over 28,000 views? Um, which one? Because I, I, I saw there was a Karen video up yesterday that people were uh people were going over. Um I am up for it. I am up for it. Yo, yes, oh yes, Music City Gig Hustle, people, because you don't know this. I myself, you know, live on on live on their live, you know, I let them know whenever. Whenever you guys are ready for an interview, let me know. And he said, I will let you know when that time is. And, and, and look at this. I am up for an interview, just not used to being in front of people. Give me time and I will. People see, he's letting me know. He, he go, he's going to work with me. I'm going to work with him. And boom, boom, boom. Okay, it's where I have to kick the family out. You know what? Gig 
And let me tell you this. I know what you're doing on 28,000 views. 28,000 views, you saw numbers that were ridiculous. You saw like three, 4,000 views an hour is what you saw in your analytics. I know you were like, oh my goodness. Yes, Music City. Music City, we are going to do this right now. We are going to do this right now. Okay, Music City. Let's do this. Let's do this right here. Let's do this. It's at 30K, by the way. It's at 30,000 views, by the way. And then check this out. That video is eight minutes long there, right? That video is eight minutes long there. How many watch hours get, answer this for me, how many watch hours exactly, people, I'm about to show this too. Let me go ahead and just share, share this screen. How many watch hours do you have with that one video? Like on my video that has um, the 367,000 views, I think it has like nine, I think it has like 9K hours. It has, that video has 9K watch hours on it. If they were allowing shorts to, you know, to allow for your monetization, I would have been monetized a long time ago, but I'm consistently getting about 70 to 80 uh, watch hours a day. So I only got like, I, I, I only have like two weeks left of uh, being monetized. Um, I'll give it three weeks just to be on the safe side. I'll, 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 I'll give it three. I'll give it three weeks. Um, I'm going to share this screen right now. Now, people, now, Kelly, we talked about this yesterday also. Okay? We, talk, we talked about this yesterday also. Utilizing shorts. Now, it's not a short. It's not just I'm going to put 15 seconds and that's it or a minute. It has to be something that is valuable information. It's captivating. It's a good piece of marketing for, for you. Look at all these shorts, the thousands of views on these shorts, the thousands of views on these shorts. This is how you generate traction, actual people on your channel. You generate shorts to get that traffic. They see who you are, and then you drop a video like this. Now, um, you got 128 subs from the video. Yeah, good work. Good work right there. Yeah, my um, my DoorDash, this is your problem. It's got me 239 subs off of that, that one. Um, good work on that one. How many watch? Okay, 1.9. One, one, oh, it's almost got it's almost got you. Uh, yeah, shorts gets traffic. Yeah, it's almost got you 2k views. Perfect, people. So this will let people know also if you're trying to get monetized and you're trying to do the the do it quick scheme. This video has 30,000 views. At 30,000 views, it has 1.9k watch hours. That's half of the watch hours you need. Okay, that's half of the watch hours you you, you need. So he'll go ahead and he gets another video up. Now we're gonna show this video right here. I'm gonna show it for you on here. Um, I'm gonna show your video for you people. This is this is a viral video right here. Let me go ahead and hit me. Click the link, people. This is a 30,000 view video from the link that is pinned. It only has 260 subscribers. 128 subs came came from this video here, people. Look at these shorts that have thousands of views. That means people are watching this stuff. Subscribe. There's good stuff here. Now, my video that that that, that has got the the 367,000 views on it. That one has gotten uh, 1,800 subscribers. So, for my almost 3,000, 1,800 subscribers came from that one video there. Now, let's see. We're gonna, we're gonna play this.
they were going downtown and I picked them up at the airport. But I was scheduled to pick them up at the B1 location. I was making my way down to pick them up on the B side of the terminal when I noticed a long line of cars at the B location. As you can see, there are three B locations, B3, B2, and B1. So I could not get down to B1, and I stopped at B2 to wait my turn in line. As you can see, I could not go anywhere, and I was patiently waiting for them to come to me, or I was going to move closer. So as you can see, the line is moving forward a little bit, and I could get closer to the passengers. The cars would just move forward, and I could get out of the way a little bit. Now, mind you, I don't know what these passengers look like. Sometimes I have a name, but most of the times they're fake. And out of the corner of my eye, I could see some people starting to shuffle towards me. And she started walking towards me, pointing at the sign, and was saying something under her breath. But then I see her coming, and then I heard what she said. Now, I don't know if you can read lips, but I definitely saw her complaining about being one. I get out to help her with her bags yeah, and greet her, and she's still complaining about being one. Okay. Now, mind you, I work on a three-strike program for passengers, but she's already rubbed me the wrong way two times already. I'm already starting to feel a little uneasy about the rest of the ride. Traffic. Yeah, it's traffic. Yeah, it's yeah. I guess I'm, I'm turning the air off, so. This is actually the third complaint about me and my car. I didn't know if she was insulting me or insulting the car. How about we just end it? Y'all just get to catch the next one. I don't feel like doing this right now. Y'all can like catch somebody else. I'm going to drive around. For real? Yeah. Yeah. I'm
right? Get some. Now, y'all being kind of rude. I don't feel like taking on anywhere, so I'm just going to take you back. I'm sorry, you're in the service business. You're not being rude? Asking questions? I made the link to drop them off right where I picked them up. The lady was in the back seat canceling the ride before I had the chance to end the ride when they got out of my car. But I was insulted three times during the trip and three strikes and you're out. I felt I was disrespected the entire 30 seconds to one minute of them being in the car, so I decided to tell them that the ride was over in advance. I had done over seven to 8,000 trips in my five years of doing ride share, and never once have I had a complaint on me about smell I wonder how many more disrespectful comments they would have made if I had not ended the ride the past three. I did call Uber over this incident and I let them know in advance I've had to let people out of my car. But I did let, drop them off at the location that I did pick them up from. So let me know in the comments section, did I handle this correctly or would you have let somebody get in your car and disrespect you a few times? So that's the story of me having to get rid of four people in my ride. So if you like the video, please comment. Kicking people out of your car, people. You can't be getting into people's car and you stink. I'm sorry. You know if you got to take, take a bath. You know if you got to take a bath. You know if you are. What did, what did I do? Oh, I, hit, I hit the wrong button, folks. I uh, hit the wrong button, folks. I cannot change it. I don't know what it is. You got to, if you know you smell, that's why when I was doing rides here, I stopped doing rides here. People are not, I'm, I'm not doing rides here anymore. Some people like smell like pee. Like, you smell a grown man, smell like pee. Not even a homeless grown, like, you just smell like pee. What's wrong with you? Um, Can't do it. People are disrespectful to your vehicle. They do all type of crazy stuff. They, they want to wipe their fingers on your seats. Mm -mm. You guys can look up the uh, the interview I did with uh, Tony Grand's T -T TV. Then he was called Uber Guy T Tony. Uh, Tony Grand's TV. Check that one out. He's an Uber driver, and, and we going deep. Uh, we going deep. So with that being said there, people, I want to share that. Uh, I'm, I'm always into sharing people's stuff, people in the gig economy. Gig hustler, you let these let uh let these people know out there in the gig economy, uh gig hustler. I share links, I show your videos, I make sure I'm sharing so all over. Make sure they know that there. Make sure they know that there. Now, uh but before I close on out and head out of here, um and head out of here. If anybody once again, if anybody has anything to say, anything you want to chime in with. Anything that's on your mind, I'll put the link up one more time. Boom, boom, boom. Now, people, if you are on, let me explain this. So some people see that I put out a link, but you may be watching on Facebook or something else there. Um, you can click the link. It doesn't matter what, what you're watching this on, people. 
That link is my StreamYard studio. My studio allows me to stream on all your platforms. So that link allows you to just, all you have to do is click the link. Once you click the link, you appear here and I bring you up on us. I, I bring you up here on a side screen. You don't have to download the StreamYard app. You don't have to do any of that stuff. All you do is click the link and just hit, once it says uh, enter studio, just hit enter studio and then you are on there live. So you don't have to have any special equipment because I know I do get this from, from uh, people. They say, well, how does it, how does the inter um, you work? I don't have StreamYard. Do I, you don't need StreamYard people. You don't need anything. Just like if I was doing Zoom, if I was using my Zoom account and I was, you know, doing this on Zoom, um, I will put my Zoom link, but I do it here instead of Zoom. I like this better than Zoom for some reason. Um, you know, so all you got to do is just click the link. It brings you on in, and that's it. No special software, no special anything, no special anything else like that. And I just upgraded my system here. So I upgraded my system so I can, I'm, I'm now going to be able to, um, I'm going to try to do the hot facts on location. So let's say if, um, let's say if me and the family or something, we're going to drive to the beach or something, I can do hot facts. I can do hot facts from the beach, uh, do it, do it straight from there. Then what I can do, if that happens, I can actually bring, bring up my, um, uh, my, uh, tripods. I can have different camera angles, uh, different camera angles facing in. So now I can have, uh, I can have multiple camera angles that, that are filming at me. Uh, before I just have the medium tier where I can do everything except have the camera angles. Um, now I'm going to be able to have the camera angles. So now I can actually go and do a hot facts on location somewhere. I can go to a park. I can, I can do anything like that and I can have the cameras, uh, set on up. Like, like, especially on a laptop, I can have my, um, I can have my hub, have my hub set up right there and have my wires for my cameras going, going in or have them wireless, have that thing put up there so I can set them up. One facing me, one maybe facing here, put one there. And then um, also with uh, with my moder well not my moderators with the people who are associated people who are associated with you know like the Hot Facts brand who are admins. Let's say um, let's say if they are some somewhere and we are on the same stream, they can add in a second camera where they are, so where they got the front one here, and they can have a second angle here, and I can have that here doing it the same way. So you got four angles, two separate spots. Or, you know what I mean? If yes, you know, stuff like that. Or let's say, let's just say, um, let's just say I want to do something with someone, with someone, um, let's say we got a project set up and we're in different rooms. I can have a camera in each room, you know, to go into that room because they're doing this and that green screen is set up like this in that room. So I'll be able to have set, uh, you know, di different stuff like that. More stuff to play with, more stuff to play with. I got to have better stuff to bring you guys, to have you guys so that uh, as I'm doing this Hot Facts brand and this is my NBC, my ABC, this is my Martin Lawrence. What's up? WZUP. Uh, this is that. So I'm going to be bringing in everything that you see from from uh, the No Jumper, from uh, from from all of you watch things and they have different things. I'm a person in that same field. If something looks right and that's the right fit for me, I'm gonna go ahead and use that too. If no one's hopping in, people, you know what it, you know what time it is, people. Um, I do this. What does it say? Uh, it says, oh, so that's uh, why everyone uses Streamyard. I have been wondering. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, another good way to get your channel out. Tell everyone uh, he made some business cards. They are uh, inexpensive. Use GoPrint. Yes, I got business cards too. Yep, use those. Use GoPrint. You know, you do your stuff. Do all. Do all of that stuff. It helps. But you know what time it is, people. Um, until the next caper, I gotta go. Until the next caper. I like doing that. I like doing that. Who says, uh, I think we paid about fifteen dollars for five hundred cards. Yeah, get your cards, people. I got mine. It says thank you right there. And you know, people, I cannot leave without one of these. Yes, yes, yes. Without further ado, I'm out like Chuck Woolery in two, 
and two. See you later.